stand. Let's go to the Lord in prayer tonight. Gracious Father, as we come to you tonight, we just praise your holy name. We come, Lord God, just wanting to hear from you. We just ask you, Lord, to set me behind the cross. And Father, just come and use my lips as, 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 as we speak the gospel tonight. Father, we thank you for your people. We just ask you, Father, just to touch your people, Father, as we come together to, to grow and to learn in you. Father, you've told us many things in this book of Ephesians, how we're to walk and how we're to live, how we're to talk, how we're to think. And we're just so grateful, Father, when you teach us and, we, and you help us, Father, along our way. Father, tonight as we find that we, we are in a warfare, we just ask you, Lord, that uh, we would be strong in you like, you, like the Word says. And Father, we just come to you tonight and we, we, come, we pray for the sick, Father, on our prayer list. We just ask you, Lord, just to touch all those, Father, who are sick and tonight and touch those, Father, who are recovering from surgery. Father, we pray for the shut-ins. Father, we just ask you to touch all of our shut-in people. And we just thank you for this broadcast that we could go forth, Father, and, and in the name of Jesus. And we just thank you for our pastor, our system pastor. We just ask you, Lord, just to touch our people. And we ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. He says, finally, my brother. And we're we know that he's talking to our brother. When he says brother, he's talking to the brothers and sisters in Christ. And, and he says, finally. You know, when we say finally, you'd probably be thinking, or I'd be thinking, that, uh, boy, that long-winded preacher, he's just about ready to get through. <laughs> but that's not what he's talking about when he says finally. He's talking finally that, that he wants to get down to, to something that's really dear to his heart. He did the same thing in, in the book of Philippians when he when he talked about what the things that were to think, you know, think about the things that are true, the things that are pure, you know, those kind of things. He told us, he said the same thing, because what we think, you know, governs who we are. It governs, you know, because the Bible told us, we studied in, in a few weeks ago about how we were responsible for, to renew our mind. God doesn't do it. We're to re renew our mind. We're to be, you know, we're responsible for the things we think. And God wants us to, you know, to think about the things that he wants us to think about. So, uh, and here, here he says, he says, finally, finally, my brother, I'm getting to a port that, that really needful in the church. We're, you know, we're, we're, coming, we're coming into the last days. We are, you know, I don't know, we've, we've been there a little while, but we're, we're in the last days. And Satan is getting stronger. I don't know if he's getting stronger or he just knows his time is short. And he's really showing himself. And he's really showing himself, you know, out there in the world, and, and we see it in the church also. And, and the Bible says that we, you know, we have to wrestle against him. We have to fight against Satan. He says to be strong in the Lord. To be strong in the Lord. It doesn't matter where we are, how far, you know, how grown we are in Jesus Christ. If we're a baby Christian or, or a teenage Christian or, you know, a medium Christian or or, or, a, or a grown-up Christian, it doesn't matter where we are. We're to be strong in the Lord. We're to be strong in the things we've been taught, you know, and the things that, 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 that of knowledge. Knowledge is not my head knowledge, but knowledge is my experience of the things that God's done in my life. And, and he says to be strong in the Lord, to be strong in those things that you've been taught. You know, you know the Bible tells us one place that the, uh, that the joy of the Lord is our strength. And our, our strength comes from joy. So, uh, so and we talked about that a, a, a week or so ago, about how we had to have joy. You know, that's one of the, one of the number two in the fruits of the Spirit. You know, he said we had love and then we have joy. But the joy of the Lord is our strength. Because our battle is different than, than you would, you know, go to battle out there in the world when, like when I was in the army, when I was in Far East Asia, but that's, that's not the kind of battle we fight. You know, I found most of the, the battle I fought in my life is right here. Right here. That's where I've got to fight to fight the faith, right here. Because that's, that's where, you know, that's where Satan, Satan attacks us, and we will get down a little bit, but there's two major ways that Satan attacks people that we know he... he, he Mostly tries to trick people, like he did Eve. 
But there's two, two places that, that uh, Satan usually attacks. And you know, we need to know our enemy. It's hard to fight an enemy you don't know. So we need to know our enemy. And one of the, one of the ways he attacks us is through our fear. And fear covers quite a bit of things besides just, just being afraid of something. You know, fear can be stress. You know, that's part of fear. Uh, fear can be worry. That's part of worry. If you're a worrier, you know where that's coming from. It doesn't come from God. Jesus tells us not to worry. He said we're not to worry. And, and that's part of fear. And that's one of the places that, uh, you know, we don't think about that being where Satan's going to attack us, but it is. This Kobe thing, you know, it, it has really, really attacked the church of Jesus Christ. There's still churches, you know, not open yet. And, you know, and... And there's, there's, nothing, there's nothing wrong with being, you know, cautious. I, you know, when I, cross, when I cross the street, I usually look both ways and hope I don't get run over, you know. And it's the same with, with life. You know, we, 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 we've got to use good sense, but we're not to fear. Because God didn't give us, he said, the spirit of fear. The spirit of fear comes from Satan. And, our, and the second way, I, I might get to talk a little bit more about that a little later, but the second place he attacks us is in our lust. The lust, you know, the lust of the... And not, not just sexual lust, but, but my wants. I want, I want, I want lust. Me, me, me lust. You know, the things that... Uh, <laughs> the things that... You know, you know, it talks about how money... You know, uh, <laughs> how, how money is... is well, the, thing, the thing that, you know, it's, 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 it can be evil in our lives. If that's our God, and that's, that's the only thing we're working for is money. So lust is the other way in, it, in which he attacks us. And he, he goes on and say, let, let, me, let me go on. He said, finally, my brother, be strong in the Lord. You know, Jesus, Jesus said, if you abide in me, I'll abide in you. So if we're abiding in Jesus Christ and we're living in Jesus Christ and we're, we're doing what Jesus tells us to do, the way he tells us to do it, you know, we're, we're abiding in him. That word abide is, is, is kind of a fascinating word. Some, some places say it, it's, it, it's where you live. You know, if Jesus lives in you, you're to live in him. But it's more than that. It's really more than that. To abide, you know, I've lived in several places that, that wasn't my home, you know. But to abide means not only do I live there, but I'm at home there. It's not a place of fear, you know. It's not a place of lust, but it's a place of great joy and great love and great hope, you know. And that's, that's where we abide, you know. He tells us, you know, we, we've, we've studied all about our walk, you know, and how, to, how, how we're to walk. How we're to, and, and, and walking, you know, isn't something, you know, we don't walk in, in one direction, you know, every day of our life. But what he's talking about, how he's trying to impress upon us how we're to, how we're to put these things in our life. How we're to, if we, if we walk in those things, and sooner or later they're going to become part of your life. You know, we talked about, you know, the Bible tells us, and, and I'm going to go back and, and talk about the things of, and I'm going to read the things here about, the, about what we studied about walk. The first thing we talked about, we had to walk by faith. You know, it's impossible to please God if, if, if we don't have faith. And we've got to walk by faith. That means we, we order our behavior toward faith. That's what walking means. It means to order your own behavior. And you walk, and he says we're to walk by faith. And we talked about how we're to walk in the Spirit. He says we all have the Spirit of God, so so we're to walk in that Spirit. You know, we when we, when we I just talked to you a little bit a minute ago about the fruits of the Spirit. We can read the fruits of the Spirit over and over and over, but they do us no good unless we put them fruits of the Spirit in practice. And that's the same way with walking. But he really started off about where we don't walk. He says, uh, we no longer walk in the course of this world. And, and you know, we're, we're talking about how we're to be strong in the Lord. 
And if you're still walking in the cares and the, and, the, and the principles and the teachings and the doctrines of this world, you're not going to be strong in the Lord. You're going to be strong in the world. You're going to be strong in the things of Satan. And he says we, that, that, that we no longer... Uh, that we walk worthy of our calling. We were, you know, we're all called. And he said we to walk worthy. We are worthy, he said, of our calling. And we're to walk that way. If we wasn't worthy, he wouldn't give us that calling. So you've got to walk worthy of your calling. And he says we no longer walk as the rest of the Gentiles walk. In other words, we don't walk like lost people. We don't act like lost people. We don't talk like lost people. And, and we don't say we are lost people. You know, so we, don't, we no longer walk that way. And he says we to walk in love. The most important thing we do as Christian people is our love and how we love one another. And we've got to walk in love. You're, you, you're, you're never going to be strong in the Lord without love. Because God himself is love. And if we, if we can't love, then the Bible, well, the Bible says if we don't love our brother, we don't have eternal life. But we've got to love one another. And we've got to love our love. We learned last week, we've got to love with sincerity. We've got to have sincerity of heart. It can't just be, uh, I say I love you, you know, and it means nothing. You know, the Bible tells us love not in word, but we're to love in deed. So, so we've got to understand God's love. It's not nothing any like the world's love. The world's love's all about me. Me, me, me. I, I, I. Gimme, gimme, gimme. You know, that's the world's love. And, and God's, that's not God's love. God so loved that he gave. God is a giving God. God has so much for you and me, you know, if we, if we would just take advantage of all the things that God has us, man, we'd be the happiest people on this earth. Because God has given us so much. But the problem is that we don't, a lot of people don't use the things that God has given them and the benefits that God has given them. You know, when I get through with, with the book of Ephesians, and then hopefully we'll get through really quick <laughs> either tonight or tomorrow or next week, but I just touched the surface of the book of Ephesians. The book of Ephesians is telling us how to live. How to live our lives. The first three chapters tells us what God has done so we can live this life. What he has done so we can not only live this life, live a Christian life, but so we can go to heaven. So, so in the first three chapters, he, he tells us the, a lot of the, the benefits that, that he's given us. And uh, the, the, the last three chapters, which we've been on a while, is telling us what we are to do. What is our responsibility as a Christian? What am I to do? You know, these are things that God's not going to do for me. These are the things that God tells me, that's your job. The Bible says we are laborers together with God. And, and we find as, as we walk in the things that we do, that God increases us. That God increases us more and more and we grow and more and more. The Bible talked about, we talked about it a little bit uh, two or three weeks ago in the book of Thessalonians. The book of Thessalonians, he, 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 he told them how great of love that they had for all saints. And that's what our love is to be. Not just for the, just a few people in our congregation, but we're to, be, we're to love all saints. The book of Colossians tells us that. The book of Ephesians tells us that. <clears throat> Many of Paul's writing says that our responsibility is we're to love all saints, you know. No matter what color, no matter what, what, you know. But we're to love all saints. But he told the Thessalonians, even though they were full of love, he says there's much more love for you to do. There's more that you still can grow in love unless, unless you love loving like Jesus Christ himself, you still need to grow in love. And that's the things as we talked about, about our walking. We're, we're, we, we need to be walking in the things of God and growing in the things of God continually. 
and continually in the very things that, that God tells us to grow in. He, and he, he sets each one down, you know, one, they each down in this book, How We're to Walk, in, the, in this in book of Ephesians. I don't think there's any greater book of, in Ephesians that tells the Christian what he is to do than, than the book of Ephesians. Now, the book of Romans is one of the great book of salvation. How to be saved and talking about salvation. But the book of Ephesians, and, and i got to throw Colossians in there. I love the book of Colossians. It's a little short book, but boy, it's, it's just packed. But, but like I say, after, after I'm through, don't, don't, start, don't stop studying the book of Ephesians. Like I say, there's no better there's no no better book for you to learn and to grow in Jesus Christ. And unless we look like Jesus, you know, we haven't reached that that place yet that we can stop growing. You know, it, it, you, I, I came to an age that, that you know I could retire, but you never come to an age that you stop growing in the things of the Lord. You never come to the place that you know enough that you love enough, that you have faith enough, you know, as Christ did. So, and he also told us that uh, we need to walk in the light and not in darkness. That means, you know, we're not to walk in sin. We're not to walk in sin. The Bible tells us that God is light and in him is no darkness at all. You know, I heard a sermon one time, it wasn't me that preached it, but a, but a dear friend of mine preached it. He, he preached a sermon about how, we, you know, we, we were like the moon. You know, God, God and Jesus is like the sun. The moon has no light in itself. The moon, the moon is just a reflection from the sun. And that's what we're to be. We're to be the reflection of Jesus Christ. Well, you know... Uh, Jesus Christ, I've said this before and I'll say it again, Jesus Christ was a perfect representation of the church. Jesus done nothing but what the Father told him to do or what he's seen his Father do. And the church has to be the perfect representation of Jesus Christ. Okay, let's go back to what I was talking about. He says we're to, we're to walk in love. Uh, and then he says, uh, we're to walk circumpensively, and, he, and we're to walk in the Spirit, and we're to walk in the light. We're light. We're light. We're not darkness. Okay, those are the things that, that the Bible's talking about how, that how we're to be strong in the Lord. We're all at different places in our growth. We're, you know, nobody's the same. Me and, me and my wife, you know, we were, we were not the same in our growth. My wife was probably one of the most intelligent people I've ever met. But when it comes to something about the scripture, she'd come and ask me. You know. <laughs> but we're, if, if, we're not, if, we're not, if we're not walking in any of the things that the, that the Lord told us to walk in, there's, there, there's just no way you're going to be strong in the Lord. You can't be strong in the Lord and walk in sin. You know? You can't walk in the Lord and, and not be practicing righteousness, as, as 1 John says we're to do. And if you're not strong in the Lord, the devil's going to run all over you. You're going to find yourself just falling all the time into sin. So you've got to be strong in the Lord and the power of His might. Now we're not talking about being strong in your own strength because you'll never get it done. You'll never face Satan and defeat Satan through your flesh. You'll ne it's impossible. You have to have the power of God in your life through the power of the Holy Spirit in your life to to defeat Satan, to defeat the power of Satan. And like I say, the, the war that we fight is, most of it is within ourselves. You know, we don't, like, we don't fight like an army, you know, with shooting people and beating people up and what have you. That's not, that's not the fight of a Christian. 
Did you see how Jesus fought? You know, how he came up with the Pharisees, you know, they were always after him. Always after him. And he'd just tell them the truth and love them and go on. Even when it come time for him to be crucified, the Bible says he didn't open his mouth. He said not a word. He was being beaten and saying not a word. So if, don't you think we're going to fight in the flesh the way the flesh fights? You've got to fight to the power of the Spirit. Only the Spirit can defeat Satan. Only the Spirit can make you walk in the things of God and, and to be strong. To be strong. Oh, it's a fight. It's a fight because the Bible tells us that we have strongholds in our lives. Even Christians, talking about Christian people, we have strongholds. Call it baggage, call it whatever, whatever you want, but uh, uh, 2 Corinthians says it's strongholds. But God has given us the weapons, he says, to tear down these strongholds. We can't do that something, we can't do it through the flesh. God gives us the weapons. And it's the same when we go to fight, when, when Satan is, is on us, that uh, the, only way, the only way we can fight Satan is through the Holy Spirit and, and being strong in the Lord and the power of his might. He said to put on the whole armor of God. You know, does that mean I have to put it? You know, that whole armor's heavy. Preacher's talking about the other day about how heavy the, the battle armor is, but the armor of God is, is pretty heavy. It's pretty heavy to carry. And, uh, but God, like I say, God, is, God has given us everything we need. He's given us everything we need. He's given, you know, he's, he's provided all, all the armor. Every piece he's provided. Just like he's provided for, for us to be able to walk and to live in the Christian life. We're, you know, if you're not walking and living in a Christian life, then you're, you know, then, then Satan is having a field day. But he give us the Holy Spirit. He give us the power, you know, the power over, over sin and death. Okay. He said to be strong in the Lord and the power of his night, put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. Okay, the wiles of the devil, when he talks about the wiles of the devil, he's talking about the tricks of the devil. Satan's tricky. He's tricky. He knows what you like. He knows what you want. He knows, you know, just, just, like, just like Eve, you know. He told Eve, he said, you'll be like God. You eat of the fruit, you'll be like God. Now, who don't want to be like God? Because God tells us we're to be like God. He says we're to imitate God as dear children. What? When, he, when, he, when, he, uh, when Jesus went to be tempted by the devil, you know, he used, his, he used God's own word. He may have slipped it, turned it around a little bit. Well, you know, we can, we can do that sometimes if we're not careful. You know? But he's tricky. He knows, he knows what you want. He knows what you like. And that's what, you know, and that's, and that's, that's the part of, we was talking about a part about the lust. That's lust. Okay. He says, uh, against the walls of the devil, for we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against uh, against powers, against the rulers of darkness of this age, against the spiritual host of wickedness in heavenly places. Okay, so the Bible said we don't, we don't wrestle against flesh and blood. But that's what we do. That's what we do. That's what even we do in the church. We, we fuss and fight and, and wrestle against one another. And we, you know, we wrestle against the world. We wrestle probably within our marriages, in their homes. We're not to wrestle with flesh and blood. That's not, that's not the enemy. Man's not our enemy. The enemy is Satan. We've got one enemy, and that's Satan. 
Well, one, his, and, and his demons. I, can I say demons in this church? I you know we got one time that uh, people were casting out demons out of trees, you know. Everything was demon, demon, you know, until, and, until it's, you know, people just quit talking about demons altogether. I had, I had a preacher one time to say that, uh, why, don't, why don't we preach about demons anymore? Or do we like them? <laughs> we want them there, you know, but... But we wrestle, but we don't wrestle against flesh and blood. You know, we, we don't war against one another. That's not, that's not where the battle is. And Satan loves it when you're, when you're fighting the fight in the wrong place. He loves it when you, when you look, take the scripture and, and misread it in the wrong place. He loves it when there's division in the church. <laughs> but God doesn't. But God doesn't. Because God tells us we're not to fuss and fight in the church. We're not to be about strife and envy and division. Those are all characteristics of the old man and, 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 of, and the prince of the power of the air. And those are the things we, you know we've got to renew our mind about. And, and we talk about who we're to fight. You know, the Bible tells us in the milk of the word, we're to lay aside anger and malice and hypocrisy and evil speaking, you know. And that's the milk of the word. That's where we start. And if we start laying aside anger, God sure don't want us to be angry with one another. If that's our starting place. We're not to be angry with one another. Anger is not a part of our lives anymore. The Bible says if you, if you do get angry, sin not. Don't let the sun go down on your wrath. But, but we're not to be angry. That's one of the things that we're to lay aside as Christian people. We're to lay aside our anger. And that's, that's, when, we're, that's when we're fighting against flesh and blood. Somebody, somebody believes a little different than me, so we're, you know, let's just, we're going to fuss and fight and argue about it. You know, I don't, I don't care if you take any two people in this room. They, they ain't nobody going to agree on, on, on everything. Amen. In fact, they're probably not going to agree on a lot of things. Just so we agree on one thing. That's Jesus Christ and Him crucified. Him in our lives. Us living the life that God has called us to live. And there's no, like I say, there's no place you're going to learn that walk better than in the book of Ephesians. It's just, it's just full of, of how, I'm to, to, how I'm to walk. How I'm, what I'm to do. What am I to do after I, I, I laid aside you know, the, uh, the milk of the word. The anger and the malice and hypocrisy. He tells us where we go next. He tells us where we're to walk next. You know God is methodical. I heard the preacher saying some, something about it the other day. That, about how, how that, that God is, how he's methodical. You know, if, if you go over there and, and, uh, 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 and, and read the Beatitudes, for instance, then Beatitudes is built one upon another. You know, he's methodical. He said, you, you know, uh, and, and we'll go, if you go over to Second Peter, when he's talking about, you know, how you're to build your life, you know, he said, add to your faith virtue and virtue knowledge and knowledge temperance and so on and so forth. He's methodical. He's, you know, and, and well, that's where the Methodists get their name. That's what Methodist means. They're, they're methodical. And, but, but anyway, God, God is, God, well, God, like God tells us he takes us like a baby and he grows us up just, just like people grow. And we're to grow and he's methodical in that, you know. And, and sometimes we get in places in, in the scripture we don't quite understand. And probably it's not time for you to be there yet. It's time you need to back up and be in a place that you do. Because if I can't do this word, if I can't put it in my life, it's vain. It's of no value to me whatsoever. This is to be lived. 
This is a guide for me how to live my life. The New, the New Testament. The Old Testament was a guide too. It was just, it was done differently. It wasn't, in, the, in, the, in this Testament, I get to choose. I do. I'm set free. I get to choose. Nobody's going to beat me with rods if I, if I sin today. You know, that's what they did in the Old Testament. Or stone me to death, you know. But uh, we, we live under grace. We live under God, God's love. We live under God's mercy. And why, why would we, why would we want to not learn how to, how to please God? You know, I remember my parents, my, I, I, got, I got a whole lot more out of my parents pleasing my parents rather than giving them a hard time. And it's the same with God. And, and the poor Israelites, you know, I, when, I, I, I look at them and they thought that, you know, they thought they could worship God and God would be okay if they, they went ahead and worshipped idols while they were at it. They didn't quit worshipping God. But they just said, well, I'm going to worship idols too. You know, I get a double dose. And you know, sometimes we try to do that very same thing. Maybe not, maybe, maybe not with idols that way, but may, <laughs> we, we do it that way sometimes when we try to mix the ways and the teachings of the world in with the things of the Scripture and the things of God and the things that, that, <laughs> that is the truth. And it don't mix. God tells us how to, we studied about how, how God tells us where to build our spiritual house. You know, we're to build it brick by brick, you know, board by board, nail by nail. But we're to build it, he said, upon the things that he said. That's what we build a spiritual house on the things that Christ and this book has said, and that's how we build our spiritual house. He said some build their house, you know, up on the sand, you know, they, they do it their own way. They add a little bit of the world and a little bit of church and, you know, and they build it on the sand and then when storms come, the house falls down. It's, it's just ruined. And, and why, you know, the Bible tells, tells me over in the book of Colossians that, that I can fully please God. I can fully please. Isn't that amazing? I can fully please <laughs> you know, the God of this universe. How is that? I'm to walk in the Spirit. I'm to walk in the things God says I'm to walk in. They're not hard. Jesus said, Jesus said, my way is easy and my burdens are light. It's not hard. The only thing that makes it hard is Jesus said, men love sin. Men love sin. Men love lust. Men love to sin. That's what makes it hard. Okay, we don't wrestle over flesh and blood, but we, but we wrestle against principalities and powers, against the rulers of darkness of this age, against spiritual hosts of wickedness in heavenly places. Boy, that's a lot of folks. That's a lot of demons. That's a lot of stuff we're wrestling against. You know, it's amazing to me God's going to get, I mean, the Apostle Paul's going to get into this armor, you know. But he switches here and he's talking about wrestling. He, you know, he, he, we, he took things like Jesus did to things of the world and, 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 and explained, you know, spiritual things. You know, uh, parables, what, you, you know, we call them. But in the Greek, in, in the Greek wrestling, and that's what he's talking about, about the Greek wrestlers. The, 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 the fight is so serious. Our fight should be so serious, it should be like the Greek wrestlers. When the wrestlers got done and the loser, and, and the loser came before, before the judges of the match, they tore his eyes out. And that's how he said how serious we need to take the things of God. It's serious. This wrestle, this fight we've got with the devil is a serious, you know, because the thing about Satan, if he gets a little, a little inch in there, it grows like a cancer. It grows like a cancer. You know, we, 
I, I've told you this before. I used to, I used to worry, I used to be a worry word. I worried about everything. Thank God he took it out of my life. I don't hardly worry. I don't worry about nothing much anymore. Because I found out that this that worry is the spirit is the spirit of fear. Just like, you know, depression is the spirit of fear. I used to say I was, a, I was afraid of flying, but it wasn't true. You know, you're afraid of dying. <laughs> you're afraid of the crash, you know. But it's the spirit of fear. If we go, if we go into, into the battle with Satan with fear in my heart and my life that's not repented of, I ain't got a chance. I'm just going to add to my sin. I don't have a chance. But, or lust, even at lust. If I want anything more than I want Jesus, anything more than I want Jesus, you know, I, I love my home, I love, you know, but one day I'm going to leave it all here, somebody else can enjoy it. Heaven's more important to me than, than anything. You know? Living, my, living my, me, my Christian life to me is more important than anything. And if we're truly, if we're truly Christians, that's, that's, that's what Christianity is. You died. You died, the Bible says. You were buried with him in baptism. And you were raised up into newness of life. To walk in newness. It has to be new. It is new. Okay. We're to see all these folks that uh, these evil spiritual hosts in heavenly places that we're, that we're wrestling against. Man, if you, don't, if, if you can't see the, how evil Satan is, just turn on your television. Turn over the news, <laughs> and, and you can, you'll see some of the, the evil that he is. I, when I was a young man, I, used to, I, used to, I was a fire, firefighter for, for about four or five years, and I used to ride with the police department, because when you first, come, <laughs> first go into the fire department, you have to learn where, where every street is in town. You've got to know where every street is. You've got to know where every fire hydrant is, you know. And so I used to ride with the police, you know. And if you don't think there's evil in the world, hmm, it's amazing what people do to one another. It's just amazing. He says, Therefore, take up the whole armor of God that you may be able to withstand in the evil day. Have you had an evil day? I've had a couple evil days. I've had some bad days, but there's, there's been a couple evil days. And he says, having, and having, done, having done all to stand. You know, sometimes that's all we can do, Christian people. Sometimes all we can do is stand. And he said, in the evil day, and we, we're coming upon an evil day. The days are getting more evil all the time. He said, you just got to stand. You got to stand on the principles and the doctrines of Jesus Christ. You got to stand on the principles and doctrines of this book. Sometimes there's nothing to say, nothing to do but just to stand. It's better to stand and do nothing than to sin. It's better to stand and do nothing than to fall. But there's just times that uh, that's all we can do is stand. He says, therefore, take up the whole armor. Verse 14. Stand, therefore, and gird your waist with truth. Do you know the truth? The truth will set you free. Do you know him? His name's Jesus. 
The truth in our life is, is walking in Jesus. Living and believing in Jesus. Believing what he says the way he says it. Not twisted and turned and mean to mean something else. The truth. The truth is what sets us free. You know, I love, I love, I love over in Galatians where it says, Stand fast in the liberty where Christ has set you free. He's talking about he set us free from the law. Thank God. Amen. Thank God we're not out of the law. You break one law, you broke them all. He set us free from the law. You know, we're under grace. We have rules to follow, but you're not going to be stoned for them. You know, you're not, you're not going to be beaten with rods and so on. There's a, and you're not going to be whipped with whips. Hey, New Testament, that's not New Testament, that's Old Testament. But he, but he said to, to, to put on the, the belt of truth. You know, the Bible says, you know, people up here teaching the gospel and, and, and to, te- to, to, to tell a lie and to, and, to, and to make the lie, you know, that, that people's not going to, you know, they're not going to receive any help uh, from a lie. You're not going to benefit if I stand up here and tell you, you know, some of, the, some of the things that I hear some preachers telling you, you know, it's, not, it's just not going to help you. We've got to believe the truth. That's why we're supposed to be rooted and grounded in this Word. You don't know the truth if you're not rooted and grounded in the Word of God. You know, some, some people just... All they know, all that they know of the Bible is what they heard preached Sunday morning or Sunday night or, or, or Wednesday night. But my truth is not just what I hear. My truth is what I live. My truth is what comes out of my mouth. I can, I can tell a lie just, just walking in the flesh when I should be ministering in the Spirit. I'm to be of the truth because I'm to be a Jesus. He's in me. He's in me. So we've got to, got to tighten that belt. Tighten that belt if we have any problems with truth. Okay, I don't know how far, we're, how many of these we're going to get to. Uh, having the breastplate of righteousness. Do you have righteousness? I was in a church that didn't really believe in righteousness. You know, they believed everything was sin. They believed everything, you know, you, you're, <laughs> everything you think, thought, word, and deed. Every thought you thought, every deed you did, every word you spoke. Everything was sin. There was no, no grace in that. There, <laughs> but we're to put on righteousness. The Bible says, it tells me that I'm the righteousness of Christ. My faith, my faith is my righteousness. My righteousness is not governed by any law or rule except the law of faith. That's the only, that's the, that is our righteousness in, in, the, in the New Testament. If you're living in the Old Testament, you better come to Jesus. You better come to Jesus. Because you've got to put on righteousness. You put it on. There's no righteousness in the flesh. But we've got to put on righteousness. God made it available for us. If he, if, we didn't, if he didn't make it available for us, He wouldn't tell us to put it on. Put on righteousness. Walk in righteousness. Live in righteousness. Practice righteousness. What is righteousness? Being right with God. Walking right with God. If I sin, if I make a mistake, I know where I'm to go. I'm not to keep that and let that sin grow. You know, it's like telling a lie and then you've got to tell another lie to <laughs> and another lie to compound the first lie that you told. So what are you, you know, the Bible just tells us all, we just come to Jesus. 
who is faithful and just to forgive us of our sin. And that sin is just as far east is from the west as when we were saved. It's not there anymore. So I'm to walk in righteousness. I'm to practice righteousness. Practice, practice, practice. I'm to walk in it. Pra- I said it, and I, I said it last week, and I probably say it every week. First John, the third chapter says, "Those who practice righteousness are righteous, just as He is righteous. Those who practice sin are of their father, the devil, because." Because the devil has sinned from the beginning. Satan's mad. Satan's mad. God threw him out of heaven and, and he just wants to make havoc in your life. He wants to make you just, just as miserable as he is. And he wants to tell you, you can't be righteous. You can't put on, how can you put on righteous, righteousness? Your righteousness is filthy rags. Yes, it is. But Jesus' righteousness is not. And He's within us. He's within us in the Holy Spirit. In the Spirit of God. And if God says to put on righteousness, you you must have some righteousness to put on. Okay. Well, I said that about about the church believing everything was sin. Now, I've also been in churches that believed that nothing was sin. You know, it's okay to do anything and everything. You know? I like what the book of Joshua said. He told him to study the word day and night. And he says, don't look to the left and don't look to the right. We got one place to look. Jesus Christ. Looking into him, the author and the finisher of our faith. Okay, we're to... I got seven minutes. That's almost enough time to go. Uh... Put on right, and having your shoes shod, and have, and having your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. You know, God says, "Blessed are the feet that carry the good news of the gospel." We're all carriers of the good news of the gospel. That don't mean we're all preachers, we're all teachers, that we're all evangelists, because we're not. But we speak the gospel and many times and, and we don't even have to say a word. Just the way we live. Just the example we show in our lifestyle. I've said it before. I, I got a good friend of mine. That she tells me, she says all the time, she says, preach me a sermon and use words if you have to. Live that life. Walk that walk. But the shoes of the God, preparation, are you prepared? Are you prepared of the, with the gospel? Not just prepared to, to tell someone else, but are you prepared in your own life? Are you prepared enough to wrestle with Satan of what you know in the gospel? The preparation of the gospel. We're to be prepared. We're to be prepared. We may go back here. Preparation of the gospel. Above all, taking the shield of faith, with which you can, which you will be able to quench the fiery darts of the wicked one. I don't know. Have you ever heard me talk about faith? Yeah. Without faith, it's impossible to please God. Without faith, I have no righteousness. My righteousness is by faith. Anything and everything I do is to be done by faith. Anything the Bible says that's not done by faith is sin. You know? I can't, I can't, I can't even love unless I have faith. My, my faith and my love has to mix together. My Christian walk, I can't walk a Christian life without faith because, you know, I, I, you know, I can give everything I got away, it, it doesn't matter. 
I can't please God if I, without faith. It don't matter what I do. I can stand up here for, for the next month and not come down and preach the gospel, but if I don't have any faith, it's of no value. It's of no value. Whatever you do, if you do it without faith, it's of no value to God. To be strong in God is to be strong in faith. And if you think you're coming up against the devil without faith, you're going to lose. You're going to lose. Which is able to quench the fiery darts of the wicked one. That's, that's, where, that's where the battle is, the fiery darts. God says, you, you know, the devil says, you're not good enough. You're not good enough. You, you're not really saved. You know, you, 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 you can't really pray with confidence. You know, you got you to whine. You know, I got, a, I got a plaque up in my kitchen. It says, thy shall not whine. <laughs> it helps me to remember not to, not, you know, not to complain. Oh, by the way, complaining and, and murmuring, that's all part of fear too. That's, that's right there in the spirit of fear. We, like the preacher talked about the other day, you know, we, there, there's two ways we can go, we, you know, two roads. Heaven, there's only one road, you know, but we got two roads. We, you know, we can walk in, in, in the things of God and the Spirit, or we can, we can walk in the prince of the power of the air, who is Satan who is his demons, who is all those wicked hosts he was talking about. Demons are real. If they wasn't real, Jesus wouldn't have cast them out. They're real. They might not be like on, on some of these television shows we see, but demons are real. And people are possessed with demons. But faith, that the, all those fiery darts... Look what she's doing over there. Do you know, her, do you know what she does over there? Fiery darts. I think that's, that's, <laughs> that's one of the most biggest problems in, 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 in walking the Christian life and, and is the fiery darts of the enemy. The things he's whispering in my ear. Like I said, the fight we got to fight is right here. It's right here. We don't wrestle against flesh and blood. It comes into my head. He's whispering in my ear. Oh, let's worry about that. You know, we're, you know are they going to make it home okay? They're out there driving the car. You know, we've got to be careful. We got to know our enemy. We got to, you know, you can't, you can't fight an enemy you don't know. You can't fight an enemy until you know how he's going to attack you. And the two major ways, like I said earlier, he's going to attack you is fear and lust. Fear and lust. Love not the world nor the things that are in the world. That's what he said. We're to love God with all our heart, soul, and strength. That don't leave much. <laughs> that don't leave much place to love other things, does it? I can like them, I guess. Uh, quench the fiery darts of the wicked one. And take the helmet of salvation. Now that, I, if you look up the word of salvation, in the Greek, I looked it up. It means deliverance. You've been delivered. I, I, I guess I was from the early, early Baptist church, you know, and they, what they believed in salvation is, is you were saved, you're being saved, and you will be saved. And that's scripture. That's scripture. You were delivered, you were saved, you know, from sin, you were, <laughs> you were born again, and you're being saved, you're living the sa saved life through the power of the Spirit. And one day we're going to gloriously be saved. <laughs> you know, we're going to be saved with no more pain or tears or any of this. 
And we're not even going to have to wrestle with the devil. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Gracious Father, we come to you tonight. We just thank you that you give us the weapons we need. And we know, Father, that you give us everything we need. You give us everything we need to be saved. You give us everything we need to live the Christian life. You give us everything we need to defeat Satan in our own lives. Father, I just thank you. Thank you for all these wonderful, wonderful things that you give us. And we just praise you tonight, and we just thank you tonight. And we thank you for your people. We just ask God, we just ask you to touch your people and and to help them to grow. Help them to look more like Jesus every day. Father, help us most of all to love one another the way you would have us to love one another. Father, as we leave this place, we just know, Father, that you'll always be with us, that we're always in the church because we're always with you. We just ask you, Father, just to to guide us and help us to walk this walk you teach us to walk. And we ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.